Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here once again. In this video I'm going to try to answer one of the most commonly asked questions that gets asked over and over and over again in most printing forms and that is why do my prints not match what I see on my monitor? Whether they do not match color wise, whether they do not match brightness wise, the reason starts with the monitor. The monitor out of the box or with the so-called built-in software that supposedly brings your monitor to factory specifications that will not work factory specifications for most monitors means over bright too much contrast and slightly bluish type color balance and the reason is that looks great when you're looking at movies subject on the web anything but images and that's not what we need for image editing so the only way to properly calibrate a monitor is by using a hardware calibrator. I do not own an expensive calibrator. I own an X-Rite Color Monkey Photo. There are videos on how to utilize this software. I will not go into that, but this is basically the software you would calibrate or profile my display and profile my printer. Or here, you can do both steps at once, match my printer to my display, which is what most people want to do. And like I said, um, I do have a three-part video covering the complete process, so I will not cover that here. But that's the important thing. Right now, what you are seeing is my calibrated monitor rendition. If I revert it back to the out-of-the-box rendition, this would be much brighter. It would be contrasty as heck, and the color would be a lot bluer. Okay, so once we have our monitor calibrated, now we can be assured that when we are editing images, Every color value that we see is being displayed as correctly as possible. In other words, as true as the monitor itself can produce it. The out-of-the-box condition, nothing, nada. It is not true. Okay, so you must calibrate your monitor. By calibrating it, you're also making sure that it's linear from the darkest possible tone to the brightest possible tones. And by linear, I mean that it does not change hue across the range. Think of it as if you were looking at a uh, neutral step wedge from black to white, it would be neutral all the way across that step wedge. It will not fluctuate slightly warmer in one region and ending by being slightly cooler. And usually that's what happens in a non-calibrated monitor. Okay, so let's that out of the way, we can then be assured that whatever we are editing, as we edit it, in other words, we add a little bit of yellow, we add a little bit of contrast, and so those edits that we are performing are actually represent true values and not the distorted ones that a monitor that is not calibrated would be producing. So that's basically it. I want to be able to edit my image for, say, just brightness, and when I print it, I want it to match. Well, if, think of it this way. If my monitor is very, very bright, I will tend naturally to bring down the brightness of my images. Let's, for instance, look at the image of my little grandson hugging his favorite girlfriend. If I look at the histogram, you can see that it, ex it spans from the total range, in other words. So you can see here that the majority of the tones are slightly dark. A lot of these areas here fall within this range. But basically, when you look at the image, it looks great to you. It's got a full tonality from dark to white. Now, if I print this and it comes out dark, then all I can say is that what I was viewing on my monitor was not a true rendition. The image that I actually sent to the printer is physically dark or darker than what I am seeing here. So I must bring my monitor to a degree of luminance that is correct for the ambient conditions of my editing room. Now normally I edit in a, in a semi-darkened room. I do not edit in a bright room. I don't have windows, so there's no external source that's going to change the way I perceive what I am viewing here. So then how does the printer map or print or mix the various colors of inks in the proper proportions so that what you see here matches? In other words, this pink blouse on the little girl, this yellow shirt on my little grandson, the blue tones of his little pants, the greens of the grass, all of that has to match. The neutral tones have to be neutral. And so that is done by the print profile. The print profile analyzes all of the values 
which are just a bunch of numbers, sends that to the printer, and the printer driver then looks at that lookup table that is got sent when you hit the print button, and it says, oh, okay, I have to mix so much magenta, so much yellow, so much cyan, so much gray, so much whatever color to create this value. I have to mix so much yellow, so much magenta, so much gray, so much whatever to create this value of yellow. Without those instructions, your colors will probably not match. Okay. Now, again, since most people don't have trouble matching colors, they have trouble matching the brightness. You have to realize that monitors are backlit, and so they will appear bright and luminous. Prints, on the other hand, they are viewed by reflected light and they appear dull and non-luminous. So prints have to be viewed under the proper lighting conditions. And that usually means some sort of daylight source and actually pretty bright light source. Okay? And most of us just don't have that in our homes. So a lot of the people that are serious printers will invest in a uh, viewing box. It's, it's used specifically for viewing prints. All right, so let's just get into the details now of how to set up and this is specifically for those using Canon printers. Epson printers are pretty easy to print to, especially if you're using Windows. But Canon printers are a little bit different type of animal. So I'm going to go ahead and take you really quick through the process of setting up your Canon printer for the proper printing conditions. So I'm going to go ahead. I have a ton of printers here, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and find my Canon Pro 100, and I have the XPS driver install that allows you to send 16-bit uh, images to it I'm going to choose it and now here this is by the way this is uh, Photoshop CS 2014 and here you can see that I have two choices I can either let the printer manage colors automatically or let Photoshop manage colors when I do that I'm telling Photoshop to send the instructions that my printer requires to reproduce all of the colors that I am sending it. And for that, we have to choose a proper ICC profile. So say I'm going to use my Canon Photo Luster paper, Pro Luster. I will choose that profile. The next thing I need to do is choose my rendering intent. And there are various choices. Two of them are the only relevant ones. Perceptual will try to squeeze every out of gamut color into the gamut that the printer can produce. And so that will tend to shift certain values. And if you have a photo that includes skin tones, you definitely do not want to use perceptual because it will possibly shift certain skin tones that it just cannot handle. So I usually just use relative color metric. And what that will do and you may have seen the change here as I shifted between perceptual. You see how the magentas got duller? And when I go to relative colorimetric, the magentas or the pinks get brighter. So that's what relative colorimetric does is it does not shift any of the color. Out of gamut colors will be brought in, but the colors that are already in gamut will not be shifted. So I will maintain all of my important skin tones. Now, if this was just a landscape, for instance, I would probably use the other choice. But for any images that contain people, I, I will always choose relative. All right, so that's it. Now, I'm going to go continue down to the bottom here. And this is where you will tell it to either scale to fit media, or you can literally just use, you know, you can type in whatever percent you want. So usually if I'm just going to print a straight print, I'm just going to tell it to scale the media and that'll be all I need to do at this point. Now, the next thing I need to do, this is what happens within Photoshop. So I have told it that I need Photoshop to process my image through Canon Pro 100 Luster Profile 1 and 2 was made by Canon using the high setting as print quality. In other words, the printing resolution. So we'll choose that. Now we're going to go into print settings. And this is the part most people don't get. I have chosen Pro Luster. Normally the, paper, the, the printer uh, driver will come up with standard. Standard is for text. You need to choose photo printing. We do not need borderless. 
So we're going to stick with, every time you choose photo, it's going to come up with borderless. So that's a little glitch. Take off borderless. Once you do that, it's going to, it's going to change your paper size on you. So you have to be very careful. So we're going to choose letter size. And it's going to go to standard. We're going to, we want it to high. And we want our paper to be pro luster in this case. And as you can see, every time I change it, it's going to, it's going to do a switch on me. Now, the most important part is this. We're going to hit color intensity and then matching. And here we're going to choose none. That's it. And now I hit print. So let's go back. Within the Photoshop print module, I'm going to choose Photoshop manages colors, the correct matching ICC profile for the paper I'm using, relative colorimetric or perceptual depending on the type of photo, normal printing, black point compensation, that's important, and scale to fit if that's what I want. Then in the actual driver settings, I'm going to choose photo finishing and then make sure that this is on and inside that matching, remember we went inside here matching, we choose none. Now there's another option that's brand new with the Pro 100 driver. You can come here and you can click down and actually manually pick your profile. In this case we're using that one and we want to use relative colorimetric. If I do that, then I can actually tell Photoshop to let the printer manage colors. So now you can print through an ICC profile inside the actual Canon printer driver. And that's a brand new change that has been added, which for most people is just easier to handle. Okay? Because most people forget if you're letting Photoshop handle color, for instance, like as in this case, most people forget that you have to go into the driver and make sure that you have set this to none. So either way will produce an identical print. Okay, so that's printing straight through Photoshop, either letting the driver control the ICC profile or letting Photoshop control color through the ICC profile. Either one is, is the same. We now have a pretty awesome little plugin that's included called the Canon Print Studio Pro. And you access it through File Automate. So we'll let this load. Okay. It takes a minute or so to load. Now, what does this do? This allows you to print through any Canon printer you may have. In this case, I have two of them. I have a Pro 9500 Mark II and I have the Canon Pro 100. We'll choose the Canon Pro 100 for now. Then I will choose my paper, Pro Luster. Paper source is the rear tray, quality high. I want a bordered print. Actually, we can change all of this. There are a million settings. You can do that manually by hand or not. Whatever you wish, you can just do that. But you will just leave it as a, a default border. Now, color mode. I'll just tell it to use the ICC profile and auto. And we'll just change this to relative again. And that's basically it. At this point, I can go ahead and print. That's all you really need to do. And this has been proven to work really well for those who are having problems with a print not matching or closely matching what you see on the monitor. Keep in mind you will never ever 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 completely match what you see on the monitor because they're two different animals. The monitor is backlit and photos are not. But what you want to be able to achieve is at least an approximate matching brightness and as close as possible a match on color rendition. And using this method will get you pretty close without pretty pretty much not knowing what you're doing. It's pretty uh, foolproof method. So again, open up the plugin, choose your printer, choose your paper, choose your size, and your feed, which is usually going to be the rear tray. Quality on high. And as I said, I like to use relative. Tell it to use ICC profile. And 
it will find the profile automatically according to the paper you chose up here and that is it folks um, there are other options you can print a what they call a pattern print in here if you're having problems you can actually click down here and you have various choices of pattern prints what's a pattern print it is a mosaic with an uncorrected version in the middle and various multiple corrections and once you find out as you print it you look at it you choose the one that best matches what you are looking for whether it's a match to your monitor or not and then apply those changes back to your plugin down here you can do a color one you can do a brightness and contrast one so this will match your color and this will match your brightness and contrast you can do a large pattern you can see the slight changes among each version once you find that then you read the actual corrections here and apply them here and that produces a perfect print folks unfortunately you will use two sheets of paper to achieve that but that's very little to pay or as close to perfection as possible okay doke so that's it um, yeah there's a lot of information there's a lot of things to learn a lot of things to remember so basically just remember that if you use this plugin and this plugin is available also for Lightroom and I believe it works for Photoshop elements I'm not entirely sure but I have both Lightroom and Photoshop so I just use it internally within it that allows me to pretty much match exactly what I have on the screen all right so until the next time hope you found this be helpful and if you did please leave a comment or a uh, like and please do subscribe to my channel so until the next time bye bye and happy printing